Gary Neville joins us from the gantry. Gary, he talked about how he tries to get back to what, what he called those, those improved times, the times when it looked as though Manchester United were getting things together. What's the first thing that they have to look to improve? The first thing that uh, I feared before the game, that there was this feeling that Manchester United have to sit deep and that they have to play on the counter-attack and that they would forget that they have to have some guts in possession and some guts uh, out of possession. And that means they had to flip and get the balance right. I showed the two clips before the game about how they had to sometimes press to make sure that they had to at least try, at least try and punch Manchester City. Um, they forgot to... They looked frightened to death. They looked frightened to death in possession. They looked frightened to death out of possession, almost like they were just sort of there, sort of crumpled up in a little ball in a corner waiting to be beat. Uh, and that's not good enough. That is not good enough. You can get into your shape, but then you can be aggressive from your shape. They weren't aggressive. They were passive, as he's just said. And the first thing, you know, a Manchester United player has to show guts and courage on the pitch. And you can get beat, there's no doubt. You know, played at this club a long time and you can lose football matches. But they are... They are flaky when it comes to big games. They were fearing today what might happen before the game. That can only be the, I can only come to that conclusion because of the way in which they approach the first 10, 15 minutes where they're not getting on the ball, they're stiff, they're rash, they're lacking composure, they're anxious. And it's then transferring through the whole stadium and you're up here in the gantry and you're hearing the fans groans and it just keeps going and going. And you're playing against an ice-cold, unemotional, brutal football team in Manchester City. And they got destroyed today, Manchester United. Make no mistake about it. That was a, that was a mauling, that. You're looking for emotion in a, in a positive sense from Manchester United and, and the Manchester United players. On a, a purely practical level, do they look as though they're comfortable with the shape? It, it changed during the game with the, with the substitution. Well, what do you think? Do they look like a side that are coached into knowing exactly what they're doing, exactly what's expected of them? I think because of the 5-3-2 that sort of semi-worked in the last two games, my big fear before the game was that when you play against the top team that they can transfer it from side to side quickly because I know what we used to do when we used to play against 5-3-2. I used to rub my hands. You know, you'd have Roy Keane and Paul Scholes in central midfield. Our two wingers would pin down their wing-backs so they can't get out and all of a sudden the two full-backs, whoever, you know, me on one side and whoever it was on the other would get acres of space and Scholes and Keane would transfer it to us and that's what we saw today. It was John Stones at times as a centre-back. Just had those lovely little driven passes out to Cancelo and from that you can never get a footing in the game and that's only one part of it so if you can't get a footing in the game you can't get the ball back it demoralizes you it brings you under pressure but then the individual errors is a massive problem they're hesitant in their defending and then the last part is when they get on the ball they're not showing courage to play they're not showing the courage to get on the ball and split out and spread and get forward quickly so that was a really poor performance there i know the liverpool one stands out because it was five nil but that was everything but a 5 nil, other than the scoreline in terms of sort of the outcome of the game. And like I say, Oli's under massive, massive pressure. But the first thing that has to happen is he has to have a team out there with courage. And every time I see United play without Cavani, they're less, they're, they're less of a team. He just seems to go in there and he seems to have the, the fight to play for the club, the sort of spirit on the pitch that you epitomise with it. And when he doesn't play, they just seem a little bit nice. And nice is not good enough. So, the past for Manchester United, the recent past for Manchester United, two defeats in terms of performance, very heavy defeats by two of the bitterest rivals for, for United. The draw against Atalanta with the, the late Cristiano Ronaldo equaliser and a, a win against a Spurs side that was so poor that the manager has, has lost his job. So, what next? What do Manchester United do after the, the international break? Well, up to the end of last season, Kelly, the feeling was here that there was progression and I couldn't argue with that. Second in the league, I think finishing ahead of Liverpool last season, anyone would have snapped your hand off at the start of the season. They've got the recruitment. Everyone thought in the summer they got the recruitment right with the signing of Varane, Sancho and then obviously the late signing of Cristiano Ronaldo. The club have not planned for this. The club have not planned for this moment at all. I know there are some United fans who think that maybe that the club should have acted two weeks ago because Conte was available. This club were never going to appoint Antonio Conte as their manager. It was never going to happen. They would never have considered it. And they're not prepared for this moment because they've got the plan behind Holly. They've got the staff in behind him. And there is no, I don't think there's any chance they'll make a decision during this season unless it gets so bad. And it's getting to that point now where it is getting so bad because you know, you're 11 points off the top of the league if Chelsea beat Burnley later on this afternoon. And this Manchester United squad can't be 11 points off the top of the league 11 games in. So nobody's expected this. 
Nobody's expected that Manchester United would sink so low at this point in the season. I think he's got a few weeks to sort it out. I think he's got a few weeks to get that sort of what would be that winning run going. But after the international break, he's just pointed towards it. Watford away, Villarreal away and Chelsea away. Now, they're three tough games and it could get really messy. I think Roy said at half-time in the second half it could get ugly. It could get ugly after the international break if they don't sort themselves out. 